All right, just tell, you know what I'm saying, people who you are and, uh, you know, where you went to school, you know, a little backstory on you. Uh, my name is Joshua McPhee. Um, people call me McPhee from school. Uh, I went to uh, Talladega College, and I just graduated in May uh, uh, with a degree in sociology. Um, well, we actually linked up on social media uh, early this morning, so we linked up on my lunch break, and uh, I saw that he had been out of the country to Africa. Yeah, I went to uh, Kenya and Tanzania. Kenya and Tanzania. So um, first, I guess we can start by just saying, you know, why you went, uh, what was the purpose of you going? Okay. Uh, well, I went, uh, it was a uh, graduation gift from an aunt of mine. Uh, it was a uh, trip, a uh, 10 week hiking trip uh, through this, with the school called Knowles, uh, National Outdoor Leadership School. And initially we, we went to Tanzania for 10 weeks and hiked all around uh, to different mountains, uh, including the highest mountain in, in uh, Africa, Mount Kilimanjaro. And uh, you know, after that, those 10 weeks were over, my uh, instructor invited me to his home in Kenya, in Nairobi. And uh, I spent another two weeks there, uh, touring and seeing the sights and, and embracing the culture. And, yeah. Was this your first time going over there? Yes, that was my first time uh, going overseas. I mean, I've been to, I've been to like Canada and whatnot, but that was my first time going to Africa. First stamps on my passport. So yeah. Yeah, that's amazing, bro. Thank I you. saw one picture. I'm gonna put the picture up during the video of you just laying down, look like you was just kind of tired, like. <laughs> just explaining, you know what I'm saying, you had a hike or a long day. What was the picture about? Okay, so that picture was uh, the our first day of hiking. We, actually, before we started hiking, and it was like our maybe our third day there. Yeah. And I was really just trying to get over the jet lag. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I was sleeping. Uh, that picture probably was at like, I want to say 1 o'clock in the afternoon, Africa time. Yeah. But that means like really it was like 12 o'clock midnight back in America. So That's crazy. yeah, I was just still tired, still trying to get my, my body on, on the African clock instead of being on American clock. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. So what would you say if you had to pick one thing was the most memorable thing that you saw that's going to stick with you? Being over there, like, what was the most amazing part? Um, the view from Mount Kilimanjaro was definitely the best thing. Uh, it's just amazing how high we were and just how proud I was that I made it over 19,000 feet, you know, with uh, without any help, no oxygen, just, uh, you know, by myself with my team. Just, yeah. yeah, you know, a lot of people throughout the whole course, you know, didn't think I was going to be able to make it, but I proved everybody, including myself, wrong. So what, would you give anybody any advice that's thinking about going or anything that you want to let them know? Uh, well, yeah, um, if you go to Africa, it depends on, on what type of lifestyle you expect. Uh, you know, most of Africa is not like feed the children type Africa, you know, but at the same time, like if you want a, a modern experience in Africa, then I would suggest you go somewhere like Kenya, Nairobi for instance, or South America. Those are some of the most developed countries in Africa. But if you want like say to see how quote unquote the other side lives, um, you can go to Uganda, uh, Tanzania. Uh, it's very, very, I wouldn't say underdeveloped, but it's not on the same level as America is. So how long was the hike? Uh, we hiked for, I don't know, about 70 days, honestly. Uh, there were breaks in between. Uh, we went on safari uh, to Ngorogoro Crater. And basically it's like a big zoo, except there are no feeders. The animals feed themselves by the other animals that are out there. So like we saw a hyena eating a zebra and the vultures coming in and feeding off of the scraps. And we saw lions hunting. And we just saw a whole bunch of wildlife out there. It was really crazy. Uh, saw a rhino, saw a buffalo, zebra, elephant, hippos, storks, uh, different type of animals, exotic animals that I really don't even remember the name of. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it was really cool. Really cool. So what would you say out of everything other than just what you saw, like just the way the trip made you feel, like how did it affect your quality of life? Like how did you, what did you take from it the most out of the trip? Um, well, I took... I, first of all, I took, you know, like gratefulness for what we have here in America because of how they live there and how happy they are, you know, it really puts into perspective 
you know, when we complain about some of the things that we don't have here in America versus what they have there and how happy they are, it almost makes it seem like life could be easier if we decide to simplify it a little bit, right. you know? Maybe if we didn't need the flashy jewelry or the nice clothes, because those people didn't have, I mean, they had clothes, don't get me wrong, but just they- Decent they, clothes. Exactly, you know they just had decent clothes and it wasn't like the latest, you know, fashions, but they right. still were very happy. And the sense of uh, family that they have, you know, is, it, I can't say it's not, it's not here, but it's it's not as prevalent. Yeah, exactly, as it is over there. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Did you feel that was your first time going, right? So, did you feel in any way connected with the culture? Did you feel kind of at home, maybe a little bit, or just like it was like it wasn't new to you? A little bit. I, yeah. I did. Um, the language barrier was the only thing from really stopping it from feeling like 100% home. But it is something to be in the majority and not, not the minority. That is a feeling that I wish everybody could feel, and it's not like it's not like when you go to your hood or something like that, and you know you all around people you know. Right. It's like everywhere you go, it's us, you know. And and it it almost like when you saw a white person, you were like. What are they doing here? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it was crazy. And and also, I saw more Asian people than I did white people. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chinese people are are out there in Africa. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, with that thing going on with ISIS and all that stuff, how was the security going to, to a different country? Was it anything surprising? Uh, I don't think it was super surprising or like super strict. You know, maybe like. Compared to what I saw when I got back to Europe in the Amsterdam, yeah. they met us at the airport. Like as soon as we got off the the, the little runway thing, mm -hmm. they met us there with guns and checked all of our passports. In Africa, they weren't tripping at all. Like I mean, they could let you know how the rule is: you can't bring water bottles past the security checkpoint. Africa, they let you bring your water bottles. You didn't have to hide any of that stuff. Let you bring all your food. Yeah. They didn't care about you know your little 3.5 ounce clear clear baggies with your liquids any of that they didn't care at all but in Europe I could I could definitely sense that you know security was very tight and that you know they were on high alert but this happened I, I want to say we got on the plane maybe two weeks after the, the Paris ISIS, ISIS attack so I can't say that I'm not surprised but yeah Africa was very tense and also while I was in Kenya uh, the Pope was there uh, Nairobi yeah. and you know they were my my family was a little bit worried about that but at the same time so they moved us out to uh, Naramoru which is in the country uh, basically it's about four hours away from Nairobi um, just so we could be safe but you know thank God there were no incidents there while the while the Pope was in town yeah. Some of the words I learned, uh, I learned how to count to 10. Uh, that is Moja, Mbili, Tatu, Ene, Tano, uh, Sita, Saba, uh, Kumi, <laughs> uh, Tisa, Nane. I think I said that wrong though. <laughs> um, I know little is Kudogu, I mean Kudogo. Uh, salt is chumvi, uh, wali is rice, mboga is goat, uh, yeah, and I know a few others I can't think of them right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alright, shout out to Real As It Gets and Chris Mosley for hosting me on this video. Um, honored to have an interview. Thank you.